Hello, I'm Merlijn Blau. I will be presenting our paper Sequence to Sequence Singing Synthesis using the Feed Forward Transformer together with Jordi Bonada, both at the Music Technology Group of the Pompeo Fabra University in Barcelona. Let's start. To start with some background, the singing synthesis task can be defined as generating a sung vocal waveform given an input score with lyrics. Generally, this is modeling a specific singer's voice characteristics and expression. One approach uh, is to break up the model into different components. For instance, there can be a pitch model, which predicts F0 given uh, the input score. And then there can be a timbre model, which takes the predicted F0 curve and the input score and predicts an intermediate acoustic representation, such as world features or male spec features. And finally, uh, there can be a, a waveform generator, which is typically uh, either a heuristic vocoder or a neural vocoder. In this work we will focus on the timbre model and we have a different paper in the same conference that focuses on the pitch model. One of the motivations of this work is to address some of the shortcomings of our previous singing synthesizer which we presented in 2017 and was based on the WaveNet architecture. This model, like many of the current state-of-the-art models, uh, was autoregressive, which means that the prediction of each time step is conditioned on previous time steps. This makes the model good at capturing dependencies between output time steps and also has the benefit that this factorized distribution is easier to model. Notable shortcomings are that inference is slow on GPU. This is because the computations cannot be uh, performed in parallel. And there's also a discrepancy between training and inference, which is often referred to as the exposure bias problem. Basically, this means that at training, we are using ground truth best time steps, but at inference, we're using estimated best time steps. And thus, the model can overfit to ground truth and at inference, the estimation errors can accumulate over time. And in singing synthesis, this is especially noticeable in long vowels. Another shortcoming of this previous model is the way it handles control inputs. The prediction of each time step is additionally conditioned on some control inputs, which can relate to lyrics, pitch, duration, position, dynamics, and so on. And the easiest approach is to use pre-aligned control and acoustic features. And this means in practice that the training data needs to be segmented phonetically. And also at inference, a phoneme duration model is required. Some shortcomings of this uh, is that especially for expressive singing, um, it is very hard to do automatic phonetic segmentation with good enough accuracy to train the model and thus some manual correction is required and in practice this means that annotating data sets becomes the main bottleneck in creating new voices to address some of these shortcomings uh, the improvements that we would like to apply to our model is to use a sequence to sequence uh, approach with attention and this kind of model can learn the alignment between phonemes and acoustic features during training as well as predict it uh, during inference and a typical architecture for this uh, would be to use an encoder, a decoder and a content-based attention mechanism such an architecture is depicted here on the right hand side for text-to-speech however in our experience um, if we apply such an architecture directly to singing voice, uh, learning the alignments from scratch uh, seems to be quite difficult. And we think that some of the problems might be that these models typically use a linear inductive bias for the uh, alignment. Uh, so in text-to-speech this would be related to the average speech rate and this kind of uh, bias might not hold so well for singing voice because especially vowels tend to be uh, many times longer than uh, consonants 
and also one issue might be that uh, the data sets for training singing synthesizers tend to be quite a lot smaller than for speech sometimes almost an order of magnitude smaller the second improvement is to use a feed-forward model instead of an autoregressive model and we argue that such a model should also be able to obtain good results looking at recent publications in text-to-speech and natural language processing where powerful feed-forward models have obtained results as good or sometimes even better than autoregressive models and also in our case because we follow our timer model with a waveform generator model which can be a neural vocoder uh, any potential performance gap might be mitigated by this uh, second model. However, learning sequence-to-sequence uh, -sequence attention with feedforward uh, is quite challenging and mainly because uh, we cannot use a content-based attention mechanism because these rely on acoustic information uh, which is not available in the feedforward case. The approach we propose for feedforward attention for singing voice is based on the idea that in the case of singing voice the alignment is heavily constrained by the musical score. We assume that the note score is given as an input and thus we can exploit note timing information to guide the attention. In the proposed attention mechanism, we first produce a rough initial alignment from the input musical score. We assign vowel onsets to note onsets. And then we use a simple duration model to predict the phoneme durations. Because this is only an initial alignment, we argue that the exact phoneme durations is not so important. And thus, in this work, we use a simple table of average phoneme durations. After we have this initial alignment, we refine it through a series of self-attention and convolutional And these layers gradually learn the difference between the duration model alignment and the true alignment along the depth of the model. This architecture is based on a feedforward variant of the transformer network. To give a quick walkthrough of the proposed architecture, there's first an encoder which takes the input phonetic sequence uh, extracted from the score and computes an embedding for each phoneme and combines this with some contextual information extracted using a series of convolutional layers. Then there's an aligner module which repeats each uh, encoder hidden state by the predicted phoneme durations from the duration model to end up with a sequence that has the same number of time steps as the acoustic target. Then there are some additional conditioning signals added which can be related to pitch or position within the node or speaker embedding. And finally there is a decoder which is based on the transformer network. There are a series of layers where each layer contains a self-attention sublayer block and a convolutional sublayer block. The self-attention uh, blocks basically allow for any time step to affect any other time step. This is quite similar to what uh, RNNs or CNNs uh, can do when processing time sequences, but it does so in a different way and more efficiently. Then for the convolutional blocks we use 3x1 uh, uh, gated linear units and this is a little bit different from the original transformer which just used 1x1 one one, uh, linear projections and all of the dependencies were modeled using self-attention in this case but we found that for Acoustic features in singing synthesis using slightly wider kernels helps to uh, better model local dependencies, which are very important. Some of the components in the architecture, each sublayer block uh, consists of dropout, layer normalization and a residual connection. 
the gated linear units uh, are also a little bit different from the feed forward network that is used in the original transformer and in our case we found that using gated linear units uh, required less model parameters and obtained similar performance for the attention block we use a standard scaled dot product attention but we use an additional uh, additive Gaussian bias across the diagonal uh, of which the standard deviation is learned during training and we do so because uh, we want to favor more localized self-attention assuming that uh, more close together time steps uh, should affect each other more. <coughs> to evaluate our model we performed a listening test with 18 participants each rating 12 phrases out of a total of 20 and for each phrase there were five different versions first there was a hidden reference which was just uh, analysis synthesis with world there was an autoregressive baseline model a proposed feed forward transformer model the proposed model but using ground truth phonetic durations and the proposed model without using any self attention layers the results of this listening test is that the quality of the feed forward transformer model is quite comparable to the baseline autoregressive model and if we compare the results uh, using the very simple duration model just averages uh, with the ideal duration model so ground truth phonetic durations the difference in mean opinion score is not very big so this validates that the initial alignment is not critical for the final result on the other hand if we remove self-attention um, the results are quite a bit worse than the proposed model and especially in terms of coherence of the timbre over time there's a notable reduction it should be noted that all the scores are a little on the low side and we might explain this uh, because we're using a world vocoder rather than a neural vocoder which obtains uh, slightly better results so our final conclusions are that our proposed sequence to sequence model allows training a singing synthesizer without requiring phonetic segmentation using a feed forward model instead of an autoregressive model allows for faster inference and more well-behaved modeling avoiding any exposure bias issues and compared to the autoregressive baseline this approach does not degrade the final synthesis quality on our website there are some audio examples available so please have a listen thank you very much <laughs>